Once again, it is time for another PC build video. Hey y'all, it's Butters, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day full of positivity and happiness as always. <laughs> and for today's video, we're gonna be building a PC, but not just any PC. Intel reached out to sponsor this video, and now hear me out. Are you interested in building a PC? The first PC I built was back in 2014. It was a bit confusing back then. I have seen the PC building realm change over time. GPUs are pricey and only getting pricier and bigger with every release. Most GPUs could be the size of a mini computer at this point terrifying for a new builder. At least if I was trying to get into PC building right now, I'd look at those GPUs and go, <laughs> what if I told you for under $400, you could get a GPU and a CPU that work perfectly in sync and gets you amazing performance? We're gonna be building a PC for under $1,000 that utilizes this GPU and CPU combo. The GPU is the Intel Arc A750. Here is the graphics card, and if I were new to PC building, this is the graphics card I'd wanna build with. It's very slim, very sleek. I love the design language. It's not super heavy. I'm so excited to see how this looks in the PC case. As for the CPU, you guys are not ready for this. This is the Intel Core i5-12600K. I got sent this box from Intel, ready? There he is, <laughs> there he is. Just chilling in there, let me take him out. This is the CPU today. The GPU and the CPU are literally designed to work together. They've been getting driver updates to this day. I'm telling you, the performance you get out of this is really impressive. This bundle is available at an incredible price from Micro Center, which by the way, most of these components are from Micro Center. I love Micro Center. It's my favorite place to buy PC parts. If you have one in the area, I highly recommend checking them out. They got crazy deals all the time. Let's go through them super quick. First up, the Intel Arc A750 and the i5-12600K are going for under $400. I got mine for $386.97. Next up, the Deepcool 8K400 CPU cooler in white, I got for $32.99. This Corsair 32 gigabyte of RGB RAM in white, I got for $94.99. Corsair RM750 ATX power supply in white, I got for $129.99. Let me tell you right now, never cheap out on a power supply, okay? If you're gonna go ballsy and purchase something really, really, really nice, do not cheap out on a power supply. This one terabyte SSD of the Samsung 980 Pro, I got for $59.99, which by the way, I was going for the 970, but Micro Center had a sale. Go figure, they've always got crazy deals. That's everything I got at Micro Center. For the motherboard, the ASRock B760 M HDV M.2 D4. So many letters and numbers. <laughs> it goes for 110 to 140 online, but I got it for 119.99. And last but not least, the case. I'm intrigued by this thing. This is the John's Boat D31 mesh in white. It is a micro ATX case, and I got it for 93.98. Just wanted to pop in and add up the overall total. The overall total is $918.97 cents plus tax. <laughs> Could have pushed it all the way to $1,000, but I want to leave room for tax. And what if you want to buy an LED strip light or a succulent plant or a little action figure to go inside the PC? And if I feel like my PC is missing anything, I've still got some room in the budget to go get it. I'll talk more about these components as we begin the building process, but let's get into it. I'm so excited. Let's go. And so begins the PC building process again. I have my hair up. I was so cold building this PC for whatever reason, by the way. So if you see the jacket, I was cold. Here we are, here are all the parts that we're gonna be using to prep the motherboard. And I gotta tell y'all right now, with this build, I learned a lot and I made a lot of very little mistakes. Here's the CPU. We're gonna place it in there gently, line up the triangle, give it a little wiggle to make sure it's good. It's good. Uh, this lever terrified me. I don't know what it is. This one in particular, it was so strong and the plastic shield wouldn't come off. So I was a little nervous. I said, did I install this right? But I double checked that the triangles lined up. So we're good. On to the RAM, which by the way, I got an incredible deal on. I didn't even realize it till I priced up everything. But the first RAM stick was giving me trouble. Second RAM stick, not so much, but they'll be coming out here in a bit, fun fact. Now to install this SSD, here it goes onto the motherboard. Uh, there's nothing here to cool it, so I am curious how that's gonna go. Either way, gonna be installing the bracket now for the CPU cooler. And once again, I learned a very valuable lesson with this CPU cooler. Do, 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 do. Installing this bracket here, very good. I gotta say, I learned one time to uh, install the cooler before you put it into the case, so I decided I'll try it this time. Okay, this is ridiculous. You guys know me, I don't usually use the thermal paste that comes with CPU coolers. I use my own. I was trying to get some out of the tube. I said, where is it? There isn't any. I ran out. <laughs> So thankfully I had some more on standby, but my goodness, how did that happen? Also, I cleaned the CPU uh, before I put in new thermal paste. You don't want to mix thermal paste. As I was installing this, I realized, and I'm sure you guys can see it, I can't screw in the other screw because the RAM's in the way. So I had to remove the RAM, put the fan back on, and then I was able to put the RAM back in. So learn my lesson. 
onto the case. I always love trying to figure out how to open cases, but this one I was a bit confused about. I tried yanking the sides off and then I watched a video and realized I'm just not pulling hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> I was not having it look at me walking away in shame. But I was scared to pull the glass panel so hard, but it was okay. It's meant to be. Popping in the IO shield as you do. And now we place the motherboard into the case. Now I gotta tell you, after I placed it in and started screwing it down, I realized, oh, I need another mounting bracket. So guess what? We gotta pull the motherboard back out. Just screwing in the motherboard mount and the tool itself got away from me, as you can see. But I wanna talk about this tool really quick. I'm so glad this case came with one, but this is what it looks like. When you don't have all the uh, motherboard mounting screws screwed in, you use that to screw it in. Motherboard's back in, I'm screwing it down. And guess what? I realized I still put the mounting bracket in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm not having it look at me. <laughs> I lined it up with the motherboard and everything. So I thought, so we're just pulling it right back out. And guess what? I got to take out the mounting bracket. I got to put it in the right place again. I was barely off. And so third time's the charm. Motherboard is going into the case. I got it right this time, guys. Don't worry. See, I'm screwing into that motherboard mount. Very good. And I'm screwing it all down, of course. I've never built a PC with this size motherboard. It's very unique, very different. I wanted to go ahead and install these little front panel connectors. So here we go. You can see my hand. <laughs> You can hardly see where I'm plugging them in to this build. <laughs> I really tried to get all the proper angles, I promise. So this case in particular has a really interesting way of mounting the power supply. It goes in this little cage right here and it mounts at the front of the case. I thought that was really cool. Onto the power supply. You'll also notice that I picked a lot of white components. I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could build a kind of budget PC with white components because I feel like white components tend to be a little bit more pricey. So I was like, you know what? Let's try it out. I've never built with a white power supply before. This whole build is just a big old experiment that I'm having a blast with. I also forgot to press record to get this little peel on the power supply. So clearly I was not happy about that. <laughs> anyway, screwing in the power supply into the cage. By the way, if you get any close up of my hands, you'll see on my right hand that I lost a fight to a spider. <laughs> I was clearing out the boxes of my last build and a spider was not happy about it. I am so sorry, Mr. Spider. We've learned to get along. Either way, moving on to cable management, I will say, I tried routing these cables at the bottom of the case. I even tried zip tying them. But after I was routing the CPU power cable, I realized, you know, I don't need to do that. There's a perfectly good channel here in the middle. So I decided to redirect those cables and I like it way better. Time to install the Intel Arc A750. Let's talk about it a little bit. Not only does this graphics card look incredible, I love the low profile of it, but Intel has done an incredible job keeping up with this graphics card to this day. When this graphics card dropped in October of 2022, it definitely turned some heads. I will say I did notice that there was some skipping problems at the time, but Intel has been incredibly diligent about driver releases. There's been 21 since the October launch and it has made a huge difference in this card's performance. You can get real-time ray tracing with this card, which is incredible for the price. Truly an impressive GPU and pair it with a CPU, you got some power for a good price. I put my microphone on my hand to get the ultimate peel audio. It sounded like TV static. Cool. <laughs> Shall we go ahead and turn it on? I would say so. I left the glass front off so I could flip the switch. Are you getting power? You are, okay. Is the fan spinning? Yeah, you are. Oh, it looks good. Now we gotta find out if it posts. I'm gonna turn off the light. It posted, let's go. Look at that, look at that beautiful bios. Yes, yes. The build is done. Look at how good it turned out. I think this build turned out awesome. I love the way the components flow together. The Intel Arc A750, I think is so pretty. It's so simple. I feel like it could go so well with so many different builds. And what a learning experience it has been for me. <laughs> I made a lot of little mistakes while building this PC. For example, the CPU cooler. Since I installed the RAM first, I wasn't able to actually tighten it down, so I had to take out the RAM to do that. Oh, uh, I was out of thermal paste. <laughs> I was out of thermal paste. Good thing I had some on standby though. Oh, uh, I wasn't happy with cable management in the back at first. I tied some stuff down and decided, yeah, I don't like that. So I tried again and I like it a lot better. The motherboard confused me a little bit. I had to put in another standoff and then I realized it wasn't right. So I had to try again. Whew. I couldn't even figure out how to get the size of the case off. I was just being too careful. I had to apply a bit more pressure. Overall, it looks fantastic. I'm happy with the parts choices, but I will say, when making my PC part list, I put together all of the components first, and then I picked the case last. First of all, the case, absolutely love it. It is mostly mesh. You could have any configuration of cooling that you wanted in this thing, but the case didn't come with any fans, which is okay. If I knew that beforehand, I would definitely be interested in trying out an AIO, maybe like a 240 or something. But also, if I do that and I mount it up top, my cats are gonna sit on top of it, so I might even 
even get worse temps. <laughs> The beautiful thing about me making these mistakes is one, they were all very small, two, my build works, and three, I'm a video so you can learn from me. Or if you make these mistakes, just reassurance. It's okay, you are still fully capable of building a PC. Just wanna let you know. I've built a total of what, 10, 15 PCs and they still all have managed to work even when I make mistakes, so just letting you know. You can do it. Overall, so happy with the build. I am so excited to play around with this Intel CPU and GPU hardware combo. I. Yes. Let's get Windows installed. Let's get some games installed. Let's just see how this thing runs. I really want to try out CSGO first. I'm not much of a CSGO player personally. I hopped into a bot match, but this GPU runs DX9 titles like CSGO extremely well. I want to check it out. I was reaching over a 300 FPS at times. I did not experience a single skip. The gameplay was buttery smooth. Haha, <laughs> get it? This GPU CPU combo ran this game phenomenally. My sniper shot, not so great, but that's okay. <laughs> Next up, I really wanted to play test Forza Horizon 5. Just wanted to drive through all kinds of terrain with high detail. And as you can see in the top left, by the way, I included some numbers that might help uh, with knowing how this PC is running things. I gotta say, I'm really impressed. I'm extremely impressed. And look at that smile I have on my face. <laughs> I'm clearly having a very good time. There was a plane in one of the cutscenes, so I decided let's load up Microsoft Flight Simulator because my goodness, that is a very resource intensive game. But even on ultra settings, I gotta say this PC was doing great. I started with flying over some water and some mountains, but I wanted to get some more details. So I flew over New York and uh, the PC definitely took a little bit of a hit, but it was running great. I'm really, I'm seriously impressed. I wanted to throw in some Minecraft gameplay as well, because even though it's not super intensive, it's still a comfort game that I think everybody can find joy in. I started running around just to kind of see how the frames were looking, looking great. And then I got bored and decided to fly around, especially when the chunks were loading. PC was handling it perfectly. And then I defended this village with a 360 hit on that zombie. He didn't even stand a chance. Can you tell how much fun I'm having? <laughs> this build was not only so much fun to do, but it was a great learning experience. I really wasn't familiar with Intel graphics cards. Games run great on it. Multitasking is awesome. I, for one, am very excited to see how Intel continues to navigate the graphics card space. Also, thank you so much, Intel, for sponsoring this video. I really, really, really appreciate it. What a great way to learn new hardware. I've been telling y'all for a Hot minute, I've had this IT technology itch that I've been wanting to scratch and this build right here, yeah, that was fun. But that's all I've got. Like, comment, face, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video of whatever I make. Bye 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 I usually wave with this hand, but I'm holding my microphone. You might be wondering where I am at the moment. Actually, you guys remember my downstairs room where I had a guest bed in there? Well, I decided to put it in a couch instead. I have been hanging out down here. I gotta do an updated house tour here soon. And I'm sure I will. Yeah, maybe that PC will go down here. I'm thinking living room though. We'll see. It's gonna get some use. I'm excited.